Hey everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video I will be talking about the 7th volume of Carl Jung's Black Books. So this video is part of a series of 7 videos and in each video I try to analyze, summarize and discuss each of Carl Jung's volumes separately. And this is already the last video of the series. And the 7th volume is also actually the, the biggest one of uh, all of the volumes. And, but I must say that is also one of the most challenging ones because Carl Jung is really well going all over the place with, uh, with the interactions that, he, that he's having with his unconscious and um, all of the things that he's writing down as if it uh, were his diary. So it's uh, quite a challenge, but I still think I've managed to, uh, to pin down the main important um, um, ideas from this, this volume and kind of how this in, uh, interacts with the larger volume, uh, the larger philosophy of Carl Jung. So in the near future, I will also pose a full summary of the black books as well as a review of the black books. So if you do not want to miss these videos, then please also consider uh, subscribing to this YouTube channel. So just as a short summary of the last volume, the sixth volume was dedicated uh, to a large part to the idea of the paroma. And as you may have seen reading and writing about it, the idea of the paroma can be quite a challenge because according to Carl Jung, it is impossible to define the paroma because it is everything and nothing at the same time. He wrote, in the pleroma there is nothing and everything. It is fruitless to think about the pleroma, for this would mean self-dissolution. Jung indicated that the pleroma consists of many pairs of opposites, such as good and evil. And throughout the black book, Carl Jung, he explored many of these pairs of opposites. However, Jung concluded in the sixth volume that as soon as one attempts to pursue one of these opposites, for example, good, one falls prey to the spell of the paroma because the good cannot be without, without its opposite, evil. And as a result, Jung suggested that we, instead of pursuing either one of these opposing values, should pursue our own essence, and thereby one escapes the spell of the pleroma and will truly be an individual who differentiates him or herself from outside forces. I believe that we can conclude that Carl Jung believed that one creates an identity exactly through this differentiation. And those familiar with the works of Friedrich Nietzsche might see a connection here between Jung and Nietzsche. Nietzsche also attached great value to the idea that men should define their own values instead of borrowing them from others. And I believe that Carl Jung was inspired by Nietzsche and continued to investigate these ideas of Nietzsche further. And in particular, this happened in the the black books as well, in my opinion. So to me it seems that Carl Jung brings these ideas to a conclusion in the seventh volume of the black books. Throughout the black books, Jung discussed some extremely interesting ideas relating to the unconscious, the shadow, and finally also to the idea of the paroma. Jung he tried to find out who he really was and who he really should be. However, in the end he concluded that he can never be perfect and will always make mistakes. He wrote, this man errs and you exist. That is why you are always present, since man always errs. Why must he err? He is a star seed. He errs through the unlimited. He fell down from the unknown. He continues to err. His errancy is his truth. He would dwell to know it. Through errancy he lives. I believe that this is an important lesson which Jung learned from the confrontation with his unconscious, which he documented in the black books. So besides seeing one's errors as an integral part of one's own identity, and as mentioned previously, embracing one's own, own values, Jung also believed that it is important to strive for one's own fortune. Carl Jung observed that we often attempt to feel good by acquiring the love of another. However, Jung indicated that it would be better if we can pursue the gifts inherent to ourselves. He wrote, isn't it better if each works on his own, doing what does him good, rather than desiring his well-being from his, bar his brother? Strive for the riches in yourself and every good fortune you need will happen to you. So Jung suggested a certain solitude for this purpose. He wrote, yes, the God will be born from solitude. This work strikes me. The solitude is coming on. Solitude hasn't even questions. It doesn't ask. It is empty and abysmal. For Jung, this solitude was characterized by, after having long and intense interactions with his unconscious, 
a kind of a break from his from this intense connection with his soul. He wrote, My soul, should I call you? No, no more hope, no illusion. The terror must be naked, just as helpless as I. This time there are no crutches. We now plunge the rot into the bottomless behind all possibilities. Jung feared the solitude but equally embraced it. He wrote, I have fear, an otherworldly fear. Truly the fear of a meteorite that has fallen behind the Milky Way. No human fear, simply one occurring when nothing existed, existed that might have known fear. A fear that is not actual, so it seems. I believe that these developments represent the essence of the journey which Carl Jung documented in the Black Books. First, one must get to know all the aspects of one's own unconscious, aspects which might have been neglected for a long time. One must face and build a connection uh, with one's unconscious, but also challenge it. In the end, however, one must accept all that uh, which one encountered and move out into the world. I believe that for Carl Jung, this meant that one could move into the world as a true individual who has his or her own values and interests and can differentiate him or herself enough from others in order not to fall uh, for the spell of the pleroma. So as I mentioned in the introduction, the seventh volume is a bit more difficult to read. Instead of merely interacting with the figures of his own unconscious, Carl Jung is also actively challenging them. And it appears to me that after establishing a connection with his unconscious, Carl Jung appears to attempt to distantiate himself once again from his unconscious and move out into the world with all the knowledge which he has acquired. So thank you very much for watching this video. If you have any questions, then please let me know as well. And if you do not want to miss the future video on the full summary of the Black Books as well as, uh, as a, a full review, then please also consider subscribing to this YouTube channel. So thank you very much and I hope to see you in the next video as well.